It's been a week. It's been another week. I'm late to the update this week, so I'm just going to rattle it off and we're going to get it uh, uploaded. I've been in LA this whole week. You go home not even 24 hours yeah. ago. Yeah, we went to shoot a Rob video. It shot over four consecutive days. We got there Monday night and we started shooting Tuesday, Tuesday to Friday, fly home Saturday. Now it's Sunday. I've been waiting to go back there forever. Yeah. And it was a shock to me to get back there and spend so much of my time post shooting, not going out and seeing any old haunts. Yeah. You did get to go to your old in and out I did get to go to my old in and out burger for, yeah. for dinner one night. That, it was quite close to the hotel, yeah. actually. <laughs> I ended up like mostly going home and uh, working on movie stuff. Mm -hmm. there, there was one night I hung out with a friend. Jealous right now. She loves driving on Mulholland. This is what's happening, guys. <laughs> this is Travis Williams. Hello. <laughs> this is Mulholland Drive. We are just driving around LA right now. <laughs> And I, this is what I've been missing this whole trip. Can we see? Yeah. Over there. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get higher. We'll get up there. You said to send you cool stuff, and this is this is the coolest stuff. Travis from Pops. Yeah. Who also is like one of my big horror buddies. Like he always gave me notes. He gave me notes on every single draft of Spook House and now it's happening and we talked about how it's happening and everything that he's up to in LA and it was super fun. And another friend, uh, Will, also read the script and gave me notes on it. Anyway, these were, I, it was nice to see them now that the movie's actually happening and we could kind of talk about how it's all gone. Yeah. Finally, on the plane out there, uh, there was no cell service so I couldn't do any emails or text or anything so I finally got to shot list the first two scenes that we're shooting the first weekend. I've got them uh, all written out in the script. Now I gotta type them up and put them in what I believe to be shoot order. I gotta ask Alex if he wants them in like edit order or in shoot order. I assume shoot order. If I were Alex, I'd actually probably want both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's easy enough to write them out in edit order and then just rearrange them and send them. Yeah. Then I traded emails with a sound person <laughs> and we got on the phone to try to feel each other out, see how it looks. Uh, it was a very good conversation. Waiting to hear back on that. And makeup. We weren't going to do hair and makeup in the movie. Yeah. It was one of those things where people were just going to have to do their own hair and makeup because we were already going to do haunt makeup and special effects makeup. And I also kind of like it when people look kind of real. I'm team hair and makeup. Yeah, Eliza's team hair and makeup. We had to like look at the budget once again, try to figure out how to do hair and makeup. Get rid of stunts. There's only one way in our budget to get someone for hair and makeup, and it is to eliminate all like fight stunts from the movie. Which isn't the first thing that we've eliminated for the sake of the budget. No, but it's also less important than like kill effects with stunt coordination, stunt members, all that stuff. It would just immediately take out a ton of money um, that we could allocate to hair and makeup. Yeah. And it made me think a little more creatively about what I was considering action scenes could actually be some really effective suspense scenes. Ooh. Yeah. I think it's interesting the way that things become malleable as you're trying to problem solve. When you are forced to, specifically when you are forced to problem solve, the story becomes stronger as a result. It has every time. Every time we've had to rewrite something because of budget considerations or I had a belief that puppetry was easier than it was, like things like this. Um, every time I've had to rewrite to accommodate those things to make them more realistically achievable, um, it's become better. It's become more what it should have been in the first place. It's become more character driven. It's become more... Thematically resonant. It's yeah. become more... And so I was thinking about this. I was thinking about the movie Brick. I mm -hmm. love Brick. Ryan Johnson's first movie Brick. There are certain sequences where it's like, there's a really cool shot in place of a stunt. And I always thought it was like just because of, it's a mystery movie, you know? Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, you see what's leading up to the event, you see what happens after the well, event, really, you never see the event. Really stylized <laughs> mystery It's movie. a super stylized movie, but there's like, especially when I think about it, there's a scene, like Joseph Gordon-Levitt is throwing a glass at the mirror uh, with an actress sitting right there, and she's like mouthing off or whatever. She's like the femme fatale type. One of the fem femme fatale. There's a couple. There's a couple. There's a couple. He winds up to throw the glass, and then you see this awesome, like, 
like slider tracking shot along the counter as glass shatters and like falls on it with like the ashtray like bouncing. And then you cut back to her like looking up. Never had to do a stunt. Mm -hmm. You have someone winding up to throw, you uh, have her like looking at after, after the mirror and then you just cut to a really cool shot that kind of fills in the space between where yeah. the stunt would actually go. It's still an action shot, it's just an action shot without people. Exactly. And I think there's opportunities for that, but I, but it's also not just that. I also have now reworked a couple sequences in my head. We're gonna lose a couple of things that um, Corey already built, like um, a knife wound, uh, like a, a knee wound, mm -hmm. a cut knee. Mm -hmm. That don't lo no longer has to be if they're not gonna tussle in the way I imagine them tussling. But I think it's gonna be much more exciting for her to suddenly I don't know how much I should say. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Okay, okay. But I'm, I'm interested in listening. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you. I'm not I don't sure, know how but much. It doesn't I don't have to be. It like have to in be our here. spoilers culture, well, I don't know what people want to like, know. And also, this stuff is still subject to change. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're three weeks from starting. Yeah. Yeah. Our first shoot night is three woo! weeks from tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did you ever hear back from SAG-AFTRA? Great, I wanted to talk about that too. By the way guys, we're cast. We have a full cast. We are cast SAG-AFTRA. SAG-AFTRA. No wonder they say file early. Yeah. Okay, because I filed on June 23rd. It says, if you haven't heard from us in seven days, please follow up. I looked at the emails. I sent a follow up email on July 1st. Mm -hmm. After not hearing again, I did my follow up call seven days after that. Uh, early in this week, I was at my shoot in mm -hmm. LA. I checked my phone at lunch and it was like, here is your SAG application representative. I was like, um, I believe I sent everything over the, with the initial application. If anything is missing or you have any questions, please let me know. I was really excited to be talking to you about this. I immediately got a out of office reply, out of office until July 17th. So it's, <laughs> which is today. So he came back on a Sunday. He came back on a Sunday. Okay. So um, hopefully tomorrow we'll get some movement on this thing. Most of my hotel work, movie work, was revolved around trying to get some very important props. After we ordered, they came back and saying like they will be shipped after Labor Day. All of them need to be shot prior to Labor Day. Yeah. Most of them. So I got on the phone with them on a lunch break and then afterwards I was trying to correspond with Corey over like what we needed, what we couldn't get, or there other places to get these things, what I needed to ask them, you know, all this stuff. Corey found an alternate place to get a very important one and possibly some others. We're moving on that. We're gonna have to get refunded for those things from the other company, but we're still looking for other things from them. Everybody's doing what they can. We're all just trying to do our best. Everything's gonna work out. It's just a lot of headspace to yeah. do all the shuffling and make it all happen. Yep. Anything else? I think that's the majority. I, I, I onboarded a bunch of people this yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. Like I still have some more to do. Yep. Eliza onboarded a bunch of people onto the payroll company. Um, we have to send out a Google Doc letting, finding out what people's allergies and dietary habits are. Um, and we're supposed to be getting ready to do a Zoom read through yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah. So that's what's going on. We are, are chugging away. <laughs> Um, have a good one. See you next week. Bye.